Uh, so my name is Jyoti and I work for a company called uh, Inmobi, uh, which is in the mobile uh, advertising space. So uh, between me and Sharad, we will try to cover uh, what Lens is all about and uh, hopefully uh, get most of you interested in the course of this talk. Okay, guys. So, uh, so what we got to do is, uh, so we'll uh, talk about this project. Uh, initially, we'll talk about uh, the motivation of the project. What is the problem space it is into and what exactly is trying to solve for. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll look into, uh, go, we'll talk about that with the certain examples, uh, scenarios, which we, we have encountered and uh, Lens has helped us solve it. Uh, we'll also discuss uh, uh, the design uh, and architecture at high level uh, that how actually Lens is uh, uh, solving those of the problems. And uh, we'll also see certain capabilities and the features uh, what Lens offers currently and how it is being running today at the organizations we are involved with. Okay, so, uh, so let's get started. So, uh, uh, so what we have seen is uh, in my previous organization at Inbobi and now I work at Flipkart, most of the organization have more than one analytic systems, right? So some organizations uh, may have uh, maybe the Teradatas, the Verticas, or maybe any, any columnar databases, and then they start playing around with the big data systems, right? So the new breed of systems, right? For multitude of reasons, right? The reasons could be, okay, the, the whatever the columnar database you are using, you may be using it for a certain class of problems, and then that, then you want to try your hand on the big data technologies and want to do certain class of analysis which probably may not be possible with your traditional systems, right? And uh, maybe you want to capture more granular data, may want to capture much more variety of data and uh, want to do basically certain kind of analysis which probably you could not have been doing with your any traditional data warehousing systems, right? So, so what, what actually you are trying to optimize for? So when you are, uh, look uh, basically figuring out and working on a multiple these data warehousing systems they are basically catering to some kind of a diverse requirements and the way i look at it actually you are optimizing on primarily on these three axes the fresh data fresh data means basically you want to react in real time as the something happens some event happens in your in your business you want to capture that uh, event and want to react in real time, right? So you want to react to the fresh uh, data as it arrives. Fast response means the interactivity of your of the queries you want to run, right? So you want the answers very fast. So you are optimizing for that, right? Flexible questions means the variety of uh, different questions you want to ask, right? So so a lot of the systems uh, basically maintain data, for example, for certain. Uh, La, uh, period of the window, last period of the window, right? Because the data ages. The recent data may be more important, the last one month data or last three months data may be more important than last one year's data, right? So, so you may organize uh, in your data warehouses the recent data in a, in a particular form and the older data you may be throwing that away and maybe with Hadoop you may want to capture it, right? Because that is the promise that Hadoop and the big technologies bring with it, right? You don't need to throw the data because the storage cost, the computation cost, the kind of questions you want, you can ask with Hadoop, Hive, and uh, is making that possible. Even to do a long-term trend analysis for certain kind of uh, things you can do with data, right? So these are the three axes. Ideally, what you want to be, you want to be actually higher on all of these. You want to basically act uh, as quickly as possible as something happens. You want to do things at interactive speeds, and you want to ask any question, right? Any question, whether it, it could be for last one day, or it could be last one year, or maybe last five years, and maybe on very granular attributes of the data of the business, what you are going into, right? So, uh, but obviously the cost of this uh, becomes a little tricky, and the kind of systems what we have today, uh, some of the systems allow for optimizing for all of these three, but uh, there are uh, actually certain uh, Issues are basically the cost uh, factor to that. So we'll look at that in subsequent slides. Okay. The another way uh, uh, I'm classifying the analysis, uh, the kind of analysis what we do in uh, uh, typical enterprises is uh, uh, I classify them saying operational or exploratory, right? So operational analysis is something where uh, uh, you uh, basically which you uh, do frequent uh, reports, right? Or frequent questions you ask on day-to-day -day basis. Right, which helps run your business day-to-day -day basis. 
The examples of this could be uh, some customer reports, your sales report, sales report by a certain product category, right? You want to send certain reports to customer periodically, right? That, that could be monthly reports or weekly reports, and now even the daily reports. So certain, uh, that information which is completely known that, okay, this is the kind of questions I ask on daily basis and based on that I make those decisions to run my business, to tweak my business, and I go with it, right? So, uh, so that doesn't have that much variety as much requirement because that you know well that, okay, these are the things I will ask. The exploratory uh, analysis are the things which helps you really uh, unlock the value of your data, right? Which helps you do machine learning, which helps you do uh, basically optimize your product or maybe help you launch new products to do some kind of ad hoc analysis, right? Which uh, you don't need to do day to day basis. The examples of this could be uh, you want to understand what are the patterns of sales in a, or, the, or the, what are the kind of customers who make purchases in a festival season. Let's say Thanksgiving. What are the kind of, which are the geographies people generally come and make purchases more in Thanksgiving? And what are the kind of products they buy more in Thanksgiving, for example, right? And based on that, you want to basically price or make certain offers, for example, right, for a festival season, or make those kind of decisions, right? So those, I would say, are more exploratory or ad hoc, because that, that you don't uh, know a priori, like you will be needing them on a regular basis. Uh, you have certain hypothesis, and based on the hypothesis, you go about asking those questions from the systems, right? So as the variety axis goes uh, uh, higher and higher, you, you go more towards the big data kind of systems, right? Where your axis of time also could be larger. The, even the dimensions you are looking may also be quite high. Okay, so we'll see about a certain example scenarios. Jyoti will help that cover. Thanks, Charles. So, uh, yeah, thanks, Charles. So uh, what I will do is over the next uh, few slides sort of expand on what Sharad just talked about on basically the exploratory analysis and the op operational analysis by taking some real uh, real life scenarios. And uh, so it's simplified. It's uh, not really the uh, as complex as what we really see, but sort of to uh, help people relate better, uh, we'll actually start with some actual real uh, right? So let's take the first one as the operational and exploratory analytics. So what do we mean here? Uh, so Inmovi, as I said, for example, is a uh, mobile networking uh, company. So what we do is uh, advertisers wants to advertise their ads and there are publishers who have uh, slots in which the ads can be placed and you want to do the uh, matching of the ads to the publishers. So you want to identify for a given user what is the most relevant ad and uh, when the opportunity arises you want to place that ad. So this is pretty much at a very high level uh, the whole advertisement business is all about. So uh, what do we get in these, right? When, as and when a user makes a request and uh, for an ad, the publisher will make a, a request on behalf of the user, so to speak, for an ad. He has an ad slot, he has an opportunity and he basically contacts InMovie saying, I have an ad slot where I want to uh, place an ad. And InMovie will look at all the advertisements that it has lined up and it will pretty much uh, do a, the ranking and relevance and then identify the most suitable ad. And this information is captured in a user activity log. So that is the leftmost uh, uh, box that you see here. It's a user activity. It has a timestamp, it has a user ID, then it probably has a location from which the request came from, the type of device, maybe it's an iOS or it's an Android, and whether what, what, which ad was served, whether it was served at all or not, if it, did the user act, and then there are some engagement metrics. Did the user actually click on it? Did he actually download an app? Uh, what is the revenue uh, sort of associated with this entire exercise? All this information is captured and this is uh, what we actually get on a regular basis. Then we also have uh, some information about the user. We collect over a period of time, we try to identify. So these are like sample examples, right? For a given user ID, I might know some things about his age, about the gender, about his or her age, gender, possibly what the interest and stuff. So then the allocation could be like whether which city or which country, and the device could be whether it's an iOS, iOS, which version, maybe color of the phone and whatever. Right, so these are all individual individual dimensions and there are some attributes associated with them and there is an activity which actually happens. So we want to analyze this data. So uh, this is basically the bread and butter of uh, what InMovie does. So what would be an operational analytics be? 
So operation analytics is I want to actually find out uh, user activity, I want to actually analyze and slice and dice by different cuts. So for example, I want to know how the click activity of the user was uh, when the, uh, for all male users in San Francisco area. Or maybe uh, people uh, who uh, own iOS device in uh, Bangalore. So these are different kind of cuts that I pretty much want to analyze the data. And these are what the sales, the business development and the campaign managers <coughs> on a day to day basis uh, to tweak their parameters to basically uh, adjust their pricings and bids and whatever, right? So this is the thing that they do on a very regular basis. So they don't do on all, all parameters, they don't do on all measures, they do on a subset of things, the things that really matter to them and they want it at a pretty reliable, uh, they were very deterministic rate, right? So that, that's what they want to do. And this is what we are terming as operational analytics. Now let's say uh, for some reason, uh, there is an hypothesis that says uh, users who are uh, sort of looking at ads lying down at their home and uh, sort of uh, uh, download uh, more videos or watch more videos. Maybe they are reclining in their home and they are sort of relaxed and they have more time and they are inclined to watch more videos. This is an hypothesis that probably has no basis, but maybe somebody has this hunch and wants to try out. So they want to actually look at device orientation and say whether the phone was held in a landscape position, was, was it a, held on a portrait position and what is the slice and dice of this, right? So this is an information that is not what we re really actually evaluate every single day. This is not what the campaign managers are looking for every day, but this is an, a hunch. This is something that we want to actually explore and see if it's possible. So this is an example of an exploratory analytics. If this actually becomes important and for example, then this could possibly be promoted to an operational analytics. So how, how do we solve this? So what, what, what typically do we do for this, right? So we have an activity, we regularly, we run our ETL pipelines and then the most used data, the frequently uh, queried data, uh, we sort of very optimally store possibly in a columnar uh, database, uh, which has a very clear subset of the activity and uh, with, uh, that will give you a very good uh, interactive query response. So that is the DWH store that we uh, are looking at. And then we also want to actually capture all the data that we have. I want to possibly expose them through Hive and then this will basically what you will use when you do exploratory analysis. So in, in, in Mobi, we actually use InfoBright for example for the operational analytics where th th it powers off most of the dashboards and interactive queries. And then we actually have Hive for uh, all the other purpose, right? The product managers now, uh, dip, if the information is available, the slices and dices and the cuts are available in the uh, DWH store, they'll go there because they'll get it faster. Otherwise, they'll have to come to the Hive store and then run the queries. Okay, now let's take another example, right? So uh, let's say uh, we have these sale days. Uh, Flipkart, for example, has some billion dollar day. Uh, we have the uh, Cyber Mondays and everything. So let's assume that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the e-commerce company uh, really actually spent time, it would have optimized all the products that it wants to put on sale, the prices and offers and everything, but still it may want to continuously monitor how things change so that it can actually react at real time and possibly modify some offers. For example, if a lot of shoes uh, are getting sold for whatever reason and they may want to sort of extend the offers to maybe other sports accessories if uh, that is possible. Uh, or it, there could be some logistic decisions. Let's say uh, we offer three kinds of shippings, one day, three day, and one week, and a lot of people are choosing one day shipping, and maybe that is, uh, you have only certain capacity that you can handle through one way shipping. Maybe you want to actually uh, take away some objects from one way shipping, or you want to add more by partnering with some external logistics companies. So you want to try out different combinations. So these are uh, analytics on data that just happened in the recent past, uh, not on historical. So this is, uh, very, this is like more near real time analytics. So how do we do typically them? We basically have the raw streams coming from Kafka or whatever, and then we put them through the stream processing pipelines, uh, Spark Streaming, Storm, Samsa, and then we basically store them in some uh, real time mutable store, maybe like HBase or Cassandra, and then we actually have uh, real time dashboards powering them. So uh, now what will happen is we basically have two different uh, systems, some powering your real time data and some powering your historical data. 
Okay. So, uh, so uh, we saw uh, there are varied use cases, right? So, so the operational exploratory is one class of uh, analysis we do, and uh, then the real timeness is the other aspect to it. And uh, so, what uh, all uh, enterprises end up having is basically multiple systems because. Uh, there's no one, every system has their own sweet spot, right? Not all systems work who basically optimizes on all the three axes of flexibility of what you can ask, the fresh data, or the faster responses, right? So every system has their sweet spot. So what they end up doing is having multiple systems, at least two to three systems where basically they store the data. So what it leads to? So it leads to huge complexity uh, and uh, uh, the complexity is not uh, just in terms of uh, the engineers or in terms of the uh, uh, folks who are basically managing those systems. There's a huge complexity for the users or the consumers of these systems, right? Because there are uh, many data inconsistencies. Uh, the number what you see in one system and the similar query if you do in a different systems may give you a completely different number. So which one do you trust, right? So that becomes a challenge. Obviously, high engineering cost, operational cost, because you are basically working on parallel multiple systems. Uh, the other problem is moving data across systems become a challenge. So today, something which is operation, uh, today exploratory analysis, and you think, okay, this kind of questions I want to ask regular basis, right? And I want to build a dashboard on top of it. And uh, so that uh, uh, the CXOs or whatever the decision makers uh, come in the morning and see at this dashboard very quickly. So I want to promote it to uh, basically a dashboard or an operational kind of uh, uh, analysis. So there is no easy way to move around the data. So it, it's like a huge, uh, uh, work of doing ETLs and organizing your data in a new system. So, so very, very uh, difficult to do that. The other challenging part is for the users, right? If I am a user and there are two, three systems uh, in my organization, and if I join this organization as a new, uh, uh, maybe an engineer or a product manager or a business analyst, um, I have to figure out, okay, all the, these three systems, how they work, how th what is the interface look like? More than that, the problem is about uh, the semantics as well, right? In one system, something may be called uh, net sales. In the another system, it could be called revenue, right? So, but net sales and revenue could be uh, same semantically because these are the two different words. There's a very difficult way to correlate things, what I am looking here or what I am looking there, right? So it creates all these challenges, create data silos, people not able to discover, not able to join things across and all, right? So uh, what is desired, ideally, right? So if uh, ideally I would desire a system which uh, basically help me optimize on all these three axes and uh, 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 which has a good sweet spot and give me a cost-effective solution automatically. Yeah, but unfortunately, uh, as of now, we don't have it. So, uh, and it, it allows me to do a very easy and consistent mechanism of data discovery and where there is only one way where I see, okay, these are all my data elements and this is the schema of data and this is the way of querying. And the systems figure out automatically, okay, uh, where to pick up the data and uh, how to uh, work around it, right? Uh, what is also desired is based on my workload characteristics where uh, basically some data is becoming more hot, some as the uh, data is aging, the data has become more colder, the system automatically understand and tweens, uh, tweaks the cost and performance trade-offs automatically or maybe give me some knobs at least so I can figure out that things easily, right? So, so that is what uh, in analytics world uh, would be desired, right? So Apache Lens uh, um, aims to solve uh, these uh, problems and uh, what it provides is uh, a cube abstraction layer. So uh, via which uh, it provides a logical cube data model uh, on uh, uh, where basically it's a standard OLAP cube model where you have uh, uh, like fact and a bunch of dimensions around it and uh, uh, the, the query happens on the logical data model of OLAP. Uh, and the query, uh, the person who is querying the data model doesn't need to worry about the physical storage and where the data is coming from and how the data is coming from, right? Uh, the another thing what it uh, provides it is, it provides uh, multiple tiers. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, go into detail of each of these uh, in the subsequent tries. Multiple tiers means basically as uh, uh, you're the, uh, the, uh, the roll-ups uh, can be organized in the cube 
and the cube will be aware of the roll-ups. Let's say some roll-ups could be monthly, could be weekly, and daily. Daily could roll up to weekly, weekly could roll up to monthly, and things like that. So when a query is done on a particular range of time, it automatically pick up the right level of the summarization. So the, so the summarization can be organized in a hierarchical fashion, right? And it supports multiple storages, right? So as we saw that there is no single system which is able to help with all class of problems. Uh, to provide a common view across those, it helps, uh, it, uh, the Apache Lens has to uh, provide a way to plug in different kind of storages underneath it. So uh, we'll talk about the OLAP data model. Uh, we'll expand on those two points on Apache Lens, basically the cube abstraction providing common unified view across multiple tiers of uh, multiple tiers and multiple storage views, right? So uh, before that, we just want to make sure we just have some basic terminology uh, uh, corrected here. So we basically have, uh, it's an, uh, provide the cube OLAP abstraction. So in the OLAP world, uh, we have uh, things called cubes uh, and we have dimensions. So cubes are the logical interfaces against which uh, people query. Uh, uh, there need not be any uh, physical storage directly attached to a cube. Cubes are the only interfaces for the querying. And uh, uh, cubes are made up of, uh, cube uh, are made up of actually something called facts. So what is a fact? In our earlier example, we looked at the user activity record, right? So it basically the user uh, came from a particular site at a particular time and uh, sort of uh, clicked on some advertisement. So that is a uh, fact, that is something that happened. It is sort of, it has a timestamp, it's a time series data, which is an immutable fact. And a fact uh, is comprised of uh, certain measures, which, which could, uh, things like uh, clicks, or whether he downloaded, whether there is some revenue associated with it. So these are called measures. And there are also some things called dimensions. These are the things on which you want to query, you want to slice and dice against. So in our example, the user uh, and the user's attributes are the things that you want to see how many people of uh, this particular age bucket came. So those are the kind of slices that you want to see. Similarly, from which city uh, or which country, which kind of device. So those are the dimensions. So you actually, in the cube model, you have dimensions and uh, the, uh, the, the user geo uh, device are all the dimensions and the cubes are the facts are the actual uh, activity that happened in the case. So in the cube world, a cube is just a logical entity and similarly a dimension is a logical entity itself that's a queryable interface and they have associated facts <coughs> associated with them. The fact tables and their derivatives are the ones that actually have data against them and these uh, are uh, consulted by the uh, framework when a query happens on the cube. And uh, so it joins with the facts and the dimensions as needed and uh, provides the information. So uh, if you look at the tired data fact, so what happens is uh, uh, at the bottom most, we have the activity in our example, right? So it actually had a timestamp which let's say resolves to a millisecond. So at any particular point of time, I had a bunch streaming uh, set of activities that is flowing in. Uh, which is fine and you possibly can actually query uh, anything that you want against that data set, but uh, that's too huge. And so all the queries, uh, for example, like we have like about 1 billion users and we have like 8 billion requests a day. It's going to be a very, very difficult task to actually uh, query and join these two at real time. So uh, it's uh, it, uh, at runtime, sorry. So it's, it's, a, it's a fairly difficult task and it's like very, uh, it turns a lot of data. So what do we want to do, at least for the uh, most commonly used queries, uh, the more commonly used uh, dimensions, we want to do some aggregates. So we want to either aggregate on time, say basically maybe we'll roll it up every hour, or we could also uh, aggregate on certain dimensions. We are not uh, interested at a city level, we just are interested at a country level. So we'll just roll everything at the country level, right? And so uh, each of these uh, layers in the uh, triangle that you uh, look at here, are basically one more extra level of aggregation and roll-ups that we do. So you actually have lesser number of dimensions and lesser number of measures as we go each level. And, uh, and these are sort of automatically pre-calculated and uh, sort of rolled up so that if somebody has a, a query that can be answered by any of these data sets, then we'll actually go look from them and that data uh, by definition will be much smaller size so your queries run much faster. So if you look at these arrow marks on either side, 
if you actually query possibly something from the top of the pyramid, uh, that's mostly like a pre-materialized answer that you already have. So you just go query, the, get the answer and you're done. On the other hand, if you actually query something from the bottom most, you actually are going to do the massive joins and get your data. On the other hand, obviously the kind of things that you do, you can't actually uh, uh, pre-materialize or join or roll up on all possible dimensions and measures. So you will actually pick and choose the ones that you want to do. So uh, those uh, are basically uh, going to be limited. So that's exactly why the uh, triangle is sort of narrowing in the top. And uh, it basically has a limitation on the flexibility that you have in terms of the query that you can do. So at the bottom most level, you can actually do wide variety of queries. And uh, as you move up the triangle, you will actually be limited. Your speed response times will be much higher, but the kind of queries that you'll be able to do will be much lesser. So in our example for uh, the case that we took, we have an activity. So uh, we actually have all the activity and then we could have like, let's say, this, uh, this is an example of time-based rollup, right? I could have weekly rollup, I could have monthly rollup. And then I could say, give me all uh, user activity, like user click behavior uh, for the month of uh, April and May, maybe, uh, from April to now. Then I could actually use some of the information that's available in the monthly rollups, some that could be available on the weekly rollups, and some on the uh, daily rollups. And then I could actually get the data for you in much more faster time. Uh, but the problem with that is I need to understand that such kind of rollups exist, um, which is a which is a, uh, not a trivial task because uh, these kind of rollups keep uh, created on demand depending on how the things go, right? So the end users uh, are basically uh, it's very cumbersome on them to keep track of what what all rollups are available so that I appropriately query. So lens solves this problem actually. So if people query against the lens cube abstraction, it can pick up from the right rollups. Uh, as necessary. Similarly, the uh, the storage problem that we spoke before, Lens also gives you a unified view across a multiple storage things. It will give you from your traditional data warehousing solution, from your real time store, from your batch store. So across multiple storage options, uh, the end users don't really bother about where the underlying data is residing. So they just query the Lens system and the Lens system uh, will figure out where the data is, which is the most optimal way uh, to fetch the data from, from where and it actually uh, realizes the query for them. Okay, so we'll uh, quickly, uh, I think we are running a little short of time. So I'll just quickly run through. So uh, we, uh, so as we said, so basically the bot lens simplifies it, it gives a unified view of uh, 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 a catalog in a way of data which is spread across multiple systems and give a unified logical cube, which a single cube could also be spreading across multiple systems, right? The, uh, the uh, rows in the rectangle in the previous slide actually for the same cube could be actually lying in different systems altogether. And uh, the data model, the lens uh, understands this data model and uh, the query happens at the cube level uh, where people ask just the query and the lens system rewrites it and uh, delegate to the right system for the right uh, kind of uh, uh, finding out where the data is. Okay, so going to the architecture, architecture is simple. So uh, there is a Lens server which uh, has uh, uh, Uber catalog uh, of all the data in different systems. Uh, and it has the cube data model which has uh, the association of cube with fact and the physical storage tables. The physical storage tables can be lying on any of the data stores in the bottom most layer. Uh, uh, it could be HDFS, HBase, uh, Red uh, S3, Redshift or any columnar database. And then it has a driver library via which uh, uh, it uh, plugs in and hooks into the multiple storage systems. Uh, so for example, uh, a query can run on Hive driver and Hive can talk to HDFS and can talk to HBase as well, for example, right? A JDBC driver can talk to, uh, for example, a columnar data warehouse, or it can talk to, for example, Redshift as well. Or, uh, or some folks have written a custom driver which can talk to a specific, uh, let's say, Elasticsearch. So that is also in works. Or maybe to Spark SQL and things like that. So that's what, uh, from the client side, it uh, gives multiple interfaces, a CLI, Java client, JDBC client, so that it can be uh, hooked into your any of your uh, systems uh, uh, or dashboards or any of your systems. Okay, so summarizing the capabilities, 
uh, it provides uh, OLAP cube abstraction. Data discovery is easier because there is now only single definition of data. Either it is uh, net sales or it is revenue. It's just one definition of your measure, right? So there is, uh, so it, uh, allow, it basically uh, uh, doesn't lead to confusion among the users, right? What means what? The inconsistencies goes away due to that. Also, it has query lifecycle management, uh, uh, where uh, basically uh, the query can recover if the system goes down, and it does throttling of the queries based on the load on the system, uh, on the underlying storages or driver. It also has uh, data optimization. So as we were discussing that the, your, as your business changes or requirement changes, certain uh, class or as the data ages, certain data may become more hot, other data may become cold, right? So how do you move around your data across systems? So it recommends, uh, it, uh, so that is in works, it, it does recommendation that, okay, these are your data sets which are actively uh, uh, accessed, or these are the dimension you should roll up to create an aggregate in your triangle at a row, because these are the combinations which are accessed more frequently. If you metalize those, then it will be much faster for those. So query analytics, it supports. Uh, trying out any new system is much easier because it's just a uh, matter of adding uh, uh, a driver to that system and then playing around doing experimentation for that workload. Okay, it uh, lens also integrate with Apache Zeppelin. Uh, I hope uh, uh, um, you, all of you, maybe most of you guys may be familiar with this project called Apache Zeppelin. It is uh, a notebook uh, uh, for doing uh, data analysis. Uh, very similar to IPython kind of project. So we'll just quickly see uh, how it looks like. Uh, uh, it has an interpreter concept, uh, uh, Apache Zeppelin. So uh, Lens has its own interpreter plugged into uh, uh, Zeppelin, uh, on which uh, this is the output of a Lens help command, uh, which via which you can do these kind of uh, uh, DD, DML operation or DDL operations there, right? You can create cube, you can describe a cube, uh, or you can uh, run a query as well, right? Uh, so here uh, it's saying, let's say show cubes. So these are uh, in this uh, uh, particular setup, there are three cubes which have been set up, sample cube, sales cube, and flip card RTO fact cube. So this is just to give you the flavor of how it looks like. Okay, so uh, this is describing an individual cube, like in, uh, describe cube and the cube name, flip card RTO fact, and then it uh, describe all the metadata about the cube that how this cube is constructed, what are the measures in the cubes, what are the dimensions in the cube, and how the physical tables are attached to these cubes, all the metadata around the cubes uh, uh, it's describing here. Uh, lens query execute means basically executing a particular query on the logical cube data model. Uh, for example, you are in this example, we are looking for product uh, uh, ID and number of returns uh, from a cube called Flipkart RTO fact cube and in a time range of uh, this, and, uh, and we are limiting five, right? So the output uh, comes as, uh, as a result set table, and Zeppelin is able to plot it in your whatever favorite uh, uh, plotting or a graph, whatever it supports. Okay, so the current status of the project, uh, this project was incubated in Apache in uh, last year, uh, November 2014. Uh, it has uh, made uh, two releases as of now. Uh, 2.1 being the latest. Uh, uh, it's uh, currently it supports uh, two drivers, uh, Hive and JDBC, and uh, it's deployed at uh, two organizations, InMobi and Flipkart. InMobi, it's already gone in production. Flipkart, it's going in production next two weeks. Actually, uh, the roadmap. Uh, uh, so we are building the authorization uh, where uh, you can do column level uh, authorization and row level uh, authorization. And uh, uh, also we are working on the scheduler service so that uh, you can schedule reports. So certain reports uh, folks want to see on a particular uh, interval, right? Your daily reports or a weekly reports. So instead of coming to your uh, uh, Lens dashboard, uh, you can basically schedule those reports and those reports can be triggered into, for example, your email box. And so scheduler service will help that uh, doing scheduling reports. Uh, it, and uh, uh, Lens, uh, it will also, uh, objective is to help it integrate easily with any of the BI tools like Tableau and all. So via JDBC driver. So JDBC driver, uh, currently it exists, uh, but it's like a alpha right now. So we are working to improve it so that it can be integrated with any BI tool. 
uh, automatic roll-up suggestions, as, as I was saying, basically based on the query analytics, what all queries are coming and what, what are the uh, prominent uh, group buys and what are the uh, most useful measures, those roll-up suggestions uh, the system can automatically do. And these are the two drivers which are uh, currently work in progress, uh, Elasticsearch and Spark SQL and uh, administrator console via which uh, uh, people can come and design the cube and uh, change the cube. So right now, uh, everything, those things can be done right now as well. Everything can be done via APIs right now, via the command line API or a REST API. Okay, so that's it uh, I have. Uh, so uh, feel free to subscribe to the mailing list if you are interested, if you have questions, further questions uh, on this project and uh, if anything you want to have or uh, uh, to be prioritized on the roadmap of this project, please do that. So we, we can take, uh, I think maybe a couple of questions. Okay, so uh, Kylan uh, is, uh, uh, Kylan is actually more closer to uh, uh, MOLAP. Uh, um, so MOLAP is basically pre-materialized OLAP. Right, so where you basically materialize uh, all the combinations of dimensions so that your output is uh, uh, completely ready for serving, right? Uh, lens, I would say it's actually much closer to ROLAP, uh, where basically it does the relational OLAP, where uh, uh, it, it actually, to some extent, it is HOLAP as well, because some level of aggregation it does, but uh, it does do a joins uh, across dimensions and uh, it doesn't pre-materialize uh, all combinations of your dimension cardinality. So the trade-off is that, that is one difference. The other difference is um, Lens is not a query engine. Uh, Kylin is a query engine. So Ky Kylin actually creates cube and runs your query out of HBase. And uh, as far as I know, it doesn't support anything other than HBase. Because it is a query engine, it uh, runs everything on top of HBase. It materializes your cube on HBase. Uh, while Lens is uh, more like uh, uh, a layer top of, uh, uh, on any of the query engines. Even Kylin can become one of the query engine in Lens. Okay, so the way updates are working is basically Lens by itself uh, uh, doesn't actually, is not responsible for uh, sort of ingesting the data. So uh, it's basically outside the scope of Lens. Lens is only for the querying side of it. So you need to actually have data created, the data sets created and sort of registered with Lens saying this partition is now available and then Lens can subsequently use that partition for any of the results. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, thank you very I much. I hope it was useful.